Every Disney movie opens with the same familiar scene, the sweeping and majestic vision of Sleeping Beauty's castle. But what's the story behind this palace? Well, it's actually based on a real place, and that place has got a troubled past. The inspiration behind the castle is an estate located in the Bavarian Alps. According to the legend, Walt Disney was so taken by the new Schwanstein castle while touring Europe that he incorporated it into his vision of Sleeping Beauty's castle both in the parks and in the opening sequences to the films. However, just like most of the darker original fairy tales Disney bases their movies off of, the history behind this particular manor is far more sinister and grim, and there is no happily ever after. In fact, in addition to an actual fairy tale king, we may have a cover-up to a murder mystery on our hands. Today, New Schwanstein Castle is a tourist attraction, but it was originally designed at the behest of King Ludwig II as a tribute to the work of composer Richard Wagner. Essentially, it was an enormously expensive architectural fan art in honor of the composer, who lived in a villa that Ludwig had built for him nearby. As you'll soon find out, the king was a dedicated patron of the arts. Now, King Ludwig has been described as eccentric and reclusive, but he gave himself the title of Swan King, presumably after both his childhood home of Hohenschwangau, High Swan Castle, which has tons of swan imagery and lakes full of swans, and also for Wagner's opera Lohengrin, or The Night of the Swans. In fact, one of Ludwig's first acts upon taking the throne was to invite the composer Wagner to perform at the royal palace. Ludwig would continue to support Wagner financially his whole reign. While the king always had passions that bordered on the verge of being obsessive, he began to neglect official obligations to pursue his own fanciful projects. He lived in his own artistic bubble, but he is the reason behind a lot of the beautiful castles and attractions in the area to this very day. He built a theater and many castles besides, one in honor of the Sun King, King Louis XIV of France. And you can see it looks like that palace, Versailles. Another palace, Linderhof, was smaller but no less ornate. Ludwig even built an underground grotto, the Venus Grotto, complete with electric lighting effects, super rare and expensive back then, in honor of the first act of composer Wagner's Tannhauser opera there. But even with so many castles, New Schwanstein stands out. Many consider it to be Ludwig's crowning achievement. Most every room was built to reflect Wagner's Swans opera. The king intended for the architecture to capture the elegance of Wagner's musical compositions with an emphasis on the romanticism of the Middle Ages, because Ludwig also had an affinity for medieval knights and the mythology surrounding the search for the Holy Grail. His personal quest was to recapture the authenticity of the medieval era in his newest creation, which he dubbed New Swan Castle or New Schwanstein Castle. Construction of the castle began in 1869, but the building of it was ultimately never completed. The royal bedchamber bed alone took 14 woodcarvers four years to complete because it was so ornate. Also, it's said that the actual layout of the castle was strange, built kinda awkwardly unusable for day-to-day -day living purposes. King Ludwig did reside there for a mere 172 days, however. After a crushing defeat in the Seven Weeks' War, this fortress would become his sanctuary. During this brief period, his behavior began to become even more increasingly erratic. For example, he allegedly berated a servant for putting cream in his coffee and threatened to deport another member of the household staff to America for a minor transgression. His uh, quirky personality was on full display, as he is said to have dressed up in medieval costumes and go on sleigh rides in his ornate custom-made sleighs during the snowy winter months. Which honestly sounds kind of fun though. Accounts also note that the king adopted a nocturnal lifestyle, traipsing the grounds at night and sleeping during the day, which I guess was not very common then. Although King Ludwig personally funded the building project, he increasingly went into massive debt in order to continue the castle. He was unable to repay the loans, so he threatened to end his life if any foreign creditors dared to seize his properties. Eventually, the Bavarian government intervened and attempted to depose Ludwig for his exorbitant spending. I can only imagine how much it was at this point. After initially resisting behind the safety of his brand new palace walls and guards, the king was ultimately detained by the government and taken to Berg Castle. In order to protect the financial assets of the country, the government demanded Ludwig undergo an evaluation by a psychiatrist. So, Dr. Gooden, 
per the state's request, assessed the king's mental state and ultimately declared him incompetent and therefore unfit to rule. Not entirely shocking on a financial basis, right? The details at this point become a bit murky, and I bet you didn't expect this to be a conspiracy or unsolved mystery, but here we are. Because within three days after that, Ludovic II was dead. At 40 years old, he was found submerged in water in a nearby lake. While it was initially assumed to be self-imposed, speculation about his death began to grow as Dr. Gunin, the same psychiatrist who had diagnosed him as mentally unfit, was also found deceased alongside him. This is too much of a coincidence. Some have hypothesized that Ludwig killed the doctor, and there was some evidence of self-defense struggle on the doctor's body, like broken fingernails and bruises on his face, and then the king took his own life. Maybe Ludwig didn't like hearing he was unfit to rule. Other insiders wholeheartedly disagree that this was an accidental or self-imposed drowning, as Ludwig was known to be a capable swimmer. His body was found in waist-deep water, and the autopsy found no water in his lungs. No autopsy was performed on the doctor. There were also whispers of foul play. A local fisherman who discovered both of the bodies was sworn to secrecy by someone and was to never tell anyone what he saw but he had a secret diary, which his descendants found. It's been credibly matched to his handwriting and what it contains is damning. Basically, Ludwig wanted to flee that night and the fisherman was waiting to take him away on the shore with the boat. When Ludwig climbed into the boat, someone shot him in the back, killing him. The fisherman was so terrified that he pushed the body into the water and paddled home. To further support these whispers and theories, a modern art historian provided a picture, alleged to be of Ludwig postmortem, showing his body with significant trauma around his mouth, as if to indicate he had been strangled and therefore the victim of foul play. Another suspicious piece of evidence was a jacket that supposedly belonged to Ludwig that had a bullet hole in the chest. This article of clothing was in possession of a distant member of the royal family and shared at a tea party of all times and places. Interesting thing to show off, unless you were involved somehow, right? However, the legitimacy of the jacket was never verified and it was later destroyed in a house fire. Modern scholars have questioned the validity of Ludwig's initial clinical diagnosis, noting that Ludwig competently submitted paperwork and completed other royal affairs in the period leading up to his death. With the diagnosis under scrutiny, scholars have speculated that perhaps a rival orchestrated the dethronement and subsequent death for political advantage. It was reported that members of the royal family, along with political figures, were embarrassed by the outlandish spending, extravagance, and perhaps companions of their leader. These findings only strengthen suspicions that foul play was involved in Ludwig's demise. Add to that, the castle was opened to the public a mere seven weeks after Ludwig's death, seems rather like someone is recouping costs. Additionally, Ludwig is given a Catholic burial. This is significant because in that religion, anyone who takes their own life is not to be given a proper burial. So either they made an exception for royalty or someone knew something that made proceeding with the burial okay. Something like it was not self-inflicted, say. We may never know whether a tragic accident occurred on that fateful day or if a conspiracy contributed to the death of the Swan King. Widely known as the Fairy Tale King, the suspicions surrounding his death only add to the intrigue of an already fantastical tale. Although the events that transpired are far darker than the happily ever after we're used to, every time we watch the opening credits to a Disney movie, we'll be reminded of the grandeur of King Ludwig II's vision and the mysterious, if misguided, origins behind it. Thank you, friends and fiends, for digging into some fantastic and chilling lore. Subscribe now so you won't miss the next intriguing video. Goodbye.